Ladies and gentlemen, the world tonight is in the grip of a terrible crisis. But we must not forget that mutants are human beings. A world condemned to darkness. There is one hope. The X-Men. The legendary X-Men. Who are these so-called X-Men? But I wonder when the time comes, will the X-Men be ready? X-Men, right on time. The X-Men face hopeless odds. X-Men don't cut and run. Don't mess with the X-Men. Don't mess with the X-Men. In 1963, Stanley wanted to create a group of superheroes, but didn't want to explain how they got their powers. And this is what he said on them. I wanted to do another group, another group of superheroes. But I was getting tired now of figuring out how they get their superpowers. I couldn't have everybody bitten by a radioactive spider or exposed to a gamma ray explosion. And I took the cowardly way out. I said to myself, why don't I just say they're mutants? They were born that way. It seemed like such a small premise, but with the power of Stan Lee and Jack Kirby, Marvel had created one of the most powerful and influential fictional groups that the world has ever seen. But right before we get fully into this video, we need to thank the sponsors of this video, Swagbucks. Swagbucks is a reward site and loyalty program. With Swagbucks, you can earn cash and gift cards to places like Amazon or Walmart by doing things like watching videos, playing games, completing research surveys, or shopping online. Now, personally, I've already had family that was using Swagbucks a bit into the pandemic. They were doing it in their leisure time, like while cooking or just watching TV. And it helped a good amount with getting things like from Amazon in specific. These days I do the same if I'm not working or surfing Twitter, which you can find at Caleb underscore IA. But yeah, if you click my link in the description, you can get an extra $5 bonus when taking your first survey. And if you build up enough swag bucks, you can also check out my Amazon store because you've got an Amazon cart. So there's always something there, which is nice. And again, thank you Swagbucks for sponsoring this video because this lets me do different content like this. The X-Men franchise is a significant contributor to the many fandoms in the world, and it makes sense. They were everywhere at a time. We had the Marvel vs. Capcom franchise, the X-Men movies in the 2000s, the X-Men animated series, the massive amounts of comics released, and the impact of these story arcs in the comics, which in turn helped change the game of comics everywhere, they were an absolute powerhouse with the potential to bring it all back now. And with how good they've done, they're still the seventh highest grossing movie franchise. While I would like to say something about the movie area of the X-Men, I believe that that's something already in the works from what I've heard. So the topic of this video is something that I believe that we don't see a potential push for in the future because we're making what we had work at the moment. That being the X-Men animated series. With times before and even now, the X-Men animated series had always had a place in our world, covering hard topics like identity, discrimination, and oppression. Adding on, you have a multitude of allegories that go over the topics that we've seen in history. And with the world being a lot more open to the idea of self-discovery and being who you are, the show would be fantastic for those that want to connect to a show on a deeper level. I feel like with shows like Gumball, Bojack Horseman, Gravity Falls, and Rick and Morty, there's this call for shows that provide this form of awareness and connection to the audience, and the X-Men animated series is something that would be also able to help contribute towards that. With its full cast, the vast amount of storylines, investment, and development in the characters, there's a lot to be given to the world once again. They've been able to do it before, but with the resources that we have now, I believe that we can take it on into the next level. Consider how good the show was, with having all that I've mentioned added on with a phenomenal score, that beautiful 90s animation we know it for, 
with the right care, the X-Men can come back into the limelight and hold that connection with the people that it had initially. To provide an example of the strength of the show, let's go about this from the absolute beginning. Episode 1, Season 1, Night of the Sentinels, Part 1. We open with some news that is believed to be a mutant destroying the downtown area. The specific line used to focus on is this. The fact that the perpetrator is believed to be a mutant has fueled current anti-mutant hysteria now growing nationwide. The audience is introduced to how the world views this group of people and the media is taking notice of this narrative against the mutants and introducing it to us the viewers. This transitions into two people talking about a mutant that they both know. These are the adoptive parents of our character Jubilee. It's implied that they both found out that she's a mutant. And with that information, the father has taken a means of registering her to what he believes is an outreach program for mutants. She's one of them, Martha. She needs help. But how could you register her with that mutant control agency as if she were some sort of criminal? The mother here isn't open to the idea of sending her daughter to one of these types of groups. I'd say most likely because the name of the agency is a strong reason as to why the idea sounds bad. That building is the headquarters of the mutant control agency. Still, it's most likely the notion of sending your kid to be controlled and or fixed by other people, which is the problem for her. The father doesn't see it like that because he already thinks that mutants are a problem. And if his daughter is a mutant, it's a visible problem. Maybe not to them directly, but it's the fact that he knows the negative connotations around mutants. We've been confirmed this thought with the follow-up line. Let's just hope the neighbors never find out our beautiful Jubilee's a mutant. Well, they'd never understand it. Though these aren't terrible parents. How we're shown these two, it's more so that they're most likely scared and uninformed. The information further gives us the fact that these two are foster parents. They're new. New to being a parent is one thing, but you're able to help your kid through guidance and wisdom from your experiences and knowledge. But what do you do when your kid is so different from you and you don't have any advice to give because you don't know anything about their life? The mother wants to be there for Jubilee and she doesn't know what to do, but you know that she'll be there for her anyway. The father sees what the world is and along with being uninformed, it gives him the idea that being a mutant is going to require help that he believes he simply does not have. So he takes the means of having other people do it. Now this is a huge scene and one big allegory, but we haven't got onto who this is about and how they feel, Jubilee. When we're panned over to Jubilee, you can see that she's been eavesdropping and she's not taking this news well at all. Why is this happening to me? I used to be a normal kid. It's not my fault. Being a mutant isn't something that she accepts as being her. In this moment of her life, it's more so an inconvenience even when it's something that she had her whole life. It isn't her fault, but there isn't anything at fault here to begin with. But this is her new character before she learns the ins and out of being a mutant, and in the end processing, accepting, and having self-confidence in her for who she is. You see this self-doubt in how much being a mutant is affecting her. We also have the following scenes where you can see how she feels about the situation and how she views her parents' stance on it and what they're doing about it. They're ashamed of me. I thought they loved me. And here you can see her trying to escape in video games but also projecting her feelings through the video game. Viewing the aliens in the video game as this whole situation entirely and how it invaded her world. Come on. I'll teach you to invade my universe. It also doesn't help that there's this painful irony type of moment when she tries to support the idea of her being a mutant. What's so wrong with being a mutant anyway? Along with that, she also faces discrimination for being a mutant. You're one of them, ain't you? We don't want you lousy mutants around here! And this just covers us talking about Jubilee in specific and what she's facing. A bunch is going on in this episode alone. It's such a great first episode that gives us so much information as to what you'd see the show be about and the connections to real world things help convey an idea so well. You have the Sentinels. I am here to serve and protect. The other mutants and the similar situations they've gone through. I'd like to kill my daddy when he found out I was a mutant. We all had to face that problem. Or even what to do when the pressure of the world is on them. People fear what they do not understand. If they're able to convey a point that well, 
all in one episode, which all the clips I just used were in. Think about if they were to have an entire show once again. Imagine being able to tweak so much because of the resources we have now, the animation being stylized to hold substantial similarity to the comics while still defining itself like Spider-Verse, or they can look to how well it was before and just break the barrier and make it all around better now. The theme song recreated to match the quality of the time, the storylines they can create by pulling from the comics we've received in that large time span between the series and now, the characters, their pain, their growth, the fights, <sighs> I just love the X-Men so much. I'm sorry. I, I don't even know how well I'm going about conveying my own point as to why I believe that they should come back, but I do hope that at least some of it got across. The world needs the X-Men. They've done so much to garner so many great communities, and it's insane that the push for them to return isn't a consistent talking point. Though the only reason why I'd want to talk about them that much is because the whole idea of supply and demand, so it would help give them initiative to make more X-Men related things, but I'm not an industry guy, I'm just an observer who wants to see one of his favorite franchises come back, and I'm sure that I'm not the only one. Now, before closing this out, I do want to give a final note, accessibility is a huge thing to me when talking about the series returning. If it was to return and be exclusive to streaming sites or cable channels, I feel like that would defeat the purpose a bit. One of the reasons I know people were able to watch the X-Men animated series was because you could watch it on Fox Kids. And I don't know how it works in other states, but in mine, Arizona, Fox Kids would be accessible even if you didn't have cable. I don't know what sort of impasse that TV channels have to go through to make this possible, but it would be great. People forget that even in 2020 there's a bunch of people that still go without internet or cable, so there are limitations on what can be watched. I feel like the X-Men was a show that was for everyone, and it should continue to still be that. But that's all. Thank you all for watching and listening to me talk about this franchise. It, it does mean a lot. And if you do want to help support the cause, please share the video and tweet out the hashtag with stuff like your favorite moments or your personal reasons on why you want the X-Men back. And this can be in anything. It doesn't even have to be limited to the animated series if you wish. Thanks again, and hopefully I'll see you all in the next one. Until then, peace out, and Godspeed.